Hey everybody, here we are for what is the Photoshop Creativity Virtual Summit. How you doing, Dave? Excellent, thank you. How you doing, Lisa? Hi. Anya, how you doing? Hi everyone, I'm good, thank you. Great. People are coming in, so uh, a little time to come in, but uh, weather warming up there in uh, Florida. I think it's probably been warm though this whole winter, right, Florida, Dave? Well, we've had our ups and downs where for Florida, it's there's been times where it's been unseasonably cool, which for me means possibly long sleeves, but still shorts. But, you know, for some people, that means pull out the heavy jackets and gloves and like, no, no, you can't. You can't do that unless you live somewhere where it snows. I'm sorry. And I know you get the yeah. rain. It's going to snow the next time. week for me. <laughs> snow for you, Lisa? Next week. Yep. You can't escape it. Yeah, New York, we just had... In like temperatures in the nineties. Oh, nice! It's nice. Yeah. And Ellen's got the, a lot these, of these. These past three days, it was like t-shirt and shorts in New York. Nice. Yeah. It was crazy. Ellen got a lot of rain this year too in the winter. Yeah. Okay, so people are coming in. So, uh, Dave, do you want to uh, introduce yourself and talk about the Photoshop Creativity Summit and how it is different from previous ones? Sure. Well, uh, my name is Dave Cross, and I am the person behind these things called the Photoshop Virtual Summits, and uh, still planning to do uh, what I would call a traditional Photoshop Virtual Summit later this year, but I was chatting with a couple of people, and we were brainstorming ideas for the type of classes to teach, and in particular, I talked quite a bit with Sebastian Michaels, because he runs... Uh, a group called the Photoshop Artistry and, and does a lot in the area of working with artists. And we came up with the idea of doing a, a virtual summit that was a little bit different because while it's still the main focus is on Photoshop, it's aimed at people who want to just get more creative with what they do in Photoshop. So as a result, we've combined classes on Photoshop with classes on things like inspiration and and planning out your photo shoots and being creative and then a whole bunch of Photoshop techniques and then ending up with classes on things like how to share your work and how to do gallery shows and how to print. So it's kind of a beginning to end uh, covering everything for anyone, whether you're a photographer or an artist or however you classify yourself as to do things that you want to do in Photoshop, whether it's creative projects or just get faster at doing things. So it's a little bit of everything aimed at all levels of users who want to be a little bit more creative and uh, do interesting things in Photoshop. Excellent. Excellent. And uh, Lisa, did you want to talk about or introduce yourself and talk about your session? Excellent. Yeah. Hi, my name is Lisa Carney, and I am an entertainment industry finisher. So I do a lot of one sheets, movie posters, that kind of thing. Been doing it for, I think, 100 years, like since movies. No, I'm kidding. It just feels like that. And uh, I'm so excited Dave put this on because I feel like um, this is kind of the missing link that happens with Photoshop education is people always talk about mechanics and not so much about story and creativity. And that's why I'm so excited about this particular conference. So one of my sessions, I talk a lot about assets. Like, great, you have a story to tell. Well, where do you get the assets to tell this story? Because you can't always shoot it. Um, sometimes you can, but sometimes you can't. And some of us are not great illustrators and we need some little bit of help. And then um, I'm really excited. Dave let me do kind of a practical class, as I like to call it, which is all about brushes. So, um, the, the amount of creativity you can have with Photoshop brushes is astounding, like what you can make with them. But most people don't know what's under the hood there. So they don't know how to control it. And they may get a cool brush from somebody, but they don't know how to make their own or why that brush is so cool. So I have kind of a deep dive in Photoshop brushes. Excellent. Did you want me to uh, share your screen? And uh... Oh, I'm so sorry. Yeah, here, let me... Um... No, I got Let's it now. See. I got it. You got it now? Okay. Yeah. So I think I just do this. Sorry, I'm a little new at this kind of thing. So one of the things I like to talk about, so uh, hopefully y'all can see this yellow jackets, uh, which yep. is one of the more recent finishes I did. And uh, Dennis Dunbar helped me out on it. Um, Jesus Ramirez helped me out on this. And if y'all look at all those elements, like holy guacamole, it is crackers. Um, where do you get this? Where do you get the skull? 
Where do you get the flames? How do you make all this? So um, my compositing class talks about this kind of thing. And um, even things like this, like the Your Honor finish with Brian Cranston for Showtime, most of that beard is painted. Excellent. Where do you get the brush for that? How do you control the brush for that? And most people wouldn't know that, I don't think, when they look at this kind of finish. Going through this a little quickly, hopefully it's coming through. So yeah, so I, I like to talk about this kind of stuff. Like actually this dog, the dog finish for um, movie dog, the drool, all that drool was hand painted. All the dust on the truck is painted. So how do you control your brushes? That kind of thing. So um, I'm hoping the people find it interesting. Like literally one of the things I talk about is a program called Pixel Squid. It's a plugin in Photoshop. And um, what's the guy's name on the right? Um, really good looking guy, owns a Ryan? Mint Mobile. Ryan yes, right. I always forget these people's names. I'm so sorry. So embarrassing. <laughs> anyway, his whole coat and jacket was all made out of a 3D plugin. Wow. So, um, so yeah. So hopefully, you, I'm going to stop sharing now or you can stop sharing me, no. whatever. Um, hopefully that gives folks an idea of the kind of uh, assets I'm talking about so that you can get your work done and get creative. Excellent. Excellent. And uh, Anya, would you like to introduce yourself and talk about your session as well? Sure. Hi, everyone. My name is Anya Anti. I'm a fine art conceptual photographer and I'm a storytelling photo artist. So I will be teaching two sessions. One is I will be breaking down one of my uh, storytelling art composites, and I will be talking about how to choose and work with stock images and how to work with um, uh, smart objects. So, and basically I will just show the process of creating a composite from start to finish. Um, so yeah, I'll be talking about Sharing this image the I'll be showing yeah I'll be showing how I did this image so it's a self-portrait I photographed myself separately during winter on this like fake fur piece that I purchased and then I took a um, stock image of a reindeer obviously and other bunch of things and edit there excellent and second session I will be talking about so the second session is called uh, creating meaningful art and finding your voice as an artist <laughs> So I will be talking. I will be talking about how to create meaningful art, how to use different tools of storytelling, like subject, what role the subject plays in building up the concept, uh, location, setup, and things like using metaphors and symbolism in your work. And as an example, I will talk about my two and a half seconds climate change awareness project that I created a few years ago uh, in Iceland. And I will be talking about the process of how I came up with this project, how I developed different concepts, and how we traveled to Iceland and spent 10 day trip there, uh, driving around the country, different locations, um, and shooting all these photographs. So each photograph represents and illustrates a different environmental issue by using allegorical figures and symbolism. Uh, landscapes, Icelandic beautiful landscapes, props. So here's, for example, global warming, and I have this like melting earth prop in my hands. Then we have like sea level rise, it represents sea level rise, and you can see like a person sitting on a rooftop and like everything is flooded around. We have greenhouse gases, we have deforestation, uh, pollution, um, glacier melt. I shot this one uh, next to the real glass, glacier in Iceland, and we have this creature with like crystals and droplets that symbolizes this glacier that is melting. That's why she has these all like, little drops. And um, what else? Awesome. We have plastic pollution with like jellyfish made out of a plastic, and this like person fishing in the water. But instead of the fish, you can see all these like plastic bags and plastic bottles. Um, so yeah, I will walk Great. through this project as an example of how you can take your photography and add more meaning to your work and use it as something, um, as your artistic voice as a photographer and talk about things that matters to you, uh, like uh, social issues, anything that you think it is important and use it as another way of expressing yourself and uh, talking about what matters to you. 
Excellent. Nice. And uh, Stephen has said, uh, how to is interesting. I'm also interested in hearing where the ideas come from or came from. Yeah. So. Yeah, and, uh, storytelling yeah, is a, really yeah, that's, important. That's a big aspect of my work. So I'll be also talking about how uh, how I came up with these ideas and what different elements right. and like props and subjects. What do they mean? What do they symbolize and represent? And like connection between the idea, photography, and execution. Great. Yeah, and, uh, you know what. Um, I was going to say, Andrew, if you don't mind me sharing something real quick, this is why I think this this uh, workshop is going to be so amazing. The whole thing. Let me get to a page real quick on my sure. site. So, like Anya's piece pieces are so moving because she's got a story behind them. And then, mm -hmm. so I have this series I did on grief, and I was talking about where do you get your elements, which doesn't sound very exciting, but when you're trying to tell a story. Like, for example, I'm not sure if you guys can see this, but this house burning in the fire hose, like learning Photoshop and finding out where to get assets when you're talking about, well, nothing, if you don't have a story behind it is a very dry conversation. But if you're trying to talk about something where you're invoking a feeling or you have something to say, like the climate change, which is so important. And this conference is such a beautiful um, marriage of these two things, a very practical Photoshop, like, hell, where do you get a fire hose or where do you get plastic, you know, to put in the floating in the water? And how do you do Photoshop and how do you combine it? Yeah, right. Photoshop was a very crucial part in this project that I did because it wouldn't be possible for me to do a lot of things and illustrate a lot of things on these photographs. Yes, I did use real Icelandic locations because Iceland is such a diverse country with such diverse uh, nature and landscapes, it, it was able to, uh, to accommodate all of my ideas. But also, yes, I used also like different types of props. But at the same time, I wouldn't be able to do a lot of things, for example, like that image with a, a sea level rise where the person is sitting on the rooftop and like everything's flooded. Obviously, I cannot think about like where would I be possibly able to photograph something like this. So I used, there's a very uh, famous tourist um, location in Iceland. I won't be able to pronounce the name, but it's like, yeah, <laughs> but it's like an open public pool with hot water. It's open to public. There's no like admission fee, no like administrations. You, can, you just go there and it's filled with hot water. So it's kind of like a hot, um, uh, not steam, but it's, it's a pool, it's a man made pool. But anyway, uh, you can swim there. So, but there is, there's a swimming pool and in the background, there's like this changing room, which I was able to transform in like a flooded building. And in front of the, in the foreground, there was a piece of white brick wall. So I was able to convert that into a house with a rooftop and the pool, I had to remove some of these people because again, it's like a very mysterious uh, tourist attraction. A lot of people go there. So I was able to remove all those people and use this water in the pool. And I extended it and like did a lot of Photoshop manipulation. And I was able to uh, make it look like it's like flooded. So yeah, Photoshop was a very important and crucial part of, of this, of, of making this project happen. That's a, a really good example of kind of the thought process behind this event is that, as Lisa said, it, it's easy to just say, well, here's a class on how to make a mask or here's another class on how to use multiple layers. And we certainly have that incorporated in. But it, to me, it was much more interesting and, and equally valuable to see an artist how they did it because we have a, a number of people. So throughout the the conference, you'll see there are going to be multiple classes that ultimately, if you had to classify them, you'd say, well, this is a compositing class because that's a big part of, you know, anything artistic in Photoshop is combining things together, but it's how they do it and the different approaches people take and their thought process behind it. And in at least one case, uh, Kara is doing a really interesting class where in the first class, she shows how she does some emulates kind of mixed media inside Photoshop. But then in the second one, she shows that the the version you saw was kind of the polished, here's when it all worked. But 
the reality is to get there, there was an awful lot of, whoops, that didn't work. So she's actually showing kind of behind the curtain what you go through to try to actually achieve something, that it's okay to try things and make mistakes and go, well, that didn't work the way I want. So she actually shows some of that side, which we normally don't see. You know, usually people say, look at this, I did this, and it all looks wonderful. But to be able to sort of see behind the scenes of the experimentation and the trial and error, I think that's also a very valuable thing for people to see. Excellent. Yeah. Yeah. And um, yep, Lisa. I just wanted to say something really quick. But again, it's why I effing love this 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 uh, creativity conference we're doing. Is everyone speaks in a different visual voice, and their way of getting there is different. And it, other people can access different ways by listening to player B and player Z, and it's like oh, and then making some kind of combination. And it, Dave's really good at about putting very disparate people together so that everybody can get something out of it. And then the other thing I wanted to say, which I'm really thankful for in this group, like Anya's got the the water image and she's got her, um, that beautiful umbrella shot with the, with the water drops in it, which is amazing. And I've got a pretty extensive technical class on how to make a brush do that kind of dispersion. So hopefully what'll happen is you'll get inspired by someone else's piece and go, oh, that's really cool. And then you go, can you watch my session and take 25 minutes on how to make a brush look like that, if that makes sense. And so you kind of have this nice seaming of different technology. Mm -hmm. Yeah, like for me, all these, like these Photoshop conferences, um, even though I've been working with Photoshop for the last like 15 years, probably, so I know a lot, but at the same time, even if you know the program, you know all the tools, but you don't always know how to apply them you know what I mean? It's like in certain ways that you haven't thought about before. So um, like those umbrella, that, that umbrella shot with drops, I actually used props and like real acrylic beads in the form of like a drop. But I would never thought about, oh, maybe I can actually do that in Photoshop and create brush like you, like Lisa mentioned. But, and this is the cool thing about these Photoshop summits that uh, you can know the program and be very good at what you do, but at the same time, it's the thought process of different creators that you have never maybe thought about earlier. And you're like, oh, I never thought that I can actually use, let's say, clone stamp tool this way. So mm -hmm. it's really nice to see how other people do that. And I think that's that's a a bit of a recurring theme in a number of classes is definitely thinking outside the box. Like Corey Barker does a class. I asked him to do a class on filters because if anyone knows filters and knows how to get things out of there that that you've never even thought of before, it's him because he'll look at something in real life and go, oh, this texture, how do I, well, I'll probably, and he uses some filter you would never think of, but it's because in the past he's experimented enough that he kind of has an idea that right. pushing this setting this way and then changing that blend mode will give you a result now I just have to stretch it a bit and all of a sudden I have shiny leather or whatever it is, you know, and that's to me is just another great lesson is to help us realize that it's not just about, you know, add a layer, add a mask, change the blend mode. You know, there's there's so many other things that the creative possibilities are just so endless when you're willing to look a little bit further and that's what a lot of these classes do is show you ideas like Anya was saying that you might have never thought of using a tool that way, but a simple little tip sparks an idea that you think, oh, on that project I'm working on, what if I tried this? You know, and then it gives you that almost like that creative freedom to say, well, I might as well try it because what's the worst thing that can happen? I'll have to undo it. Control Z. Yeah. <laughs> so, so a question I have is... Um... And I, I predicted this and it's happening even in different or more ways than I expected, uh, this whole AI boom. And so I was already a fan of the neural filters in uh, Photoshop, which they also say is Adobe Sensei. Um, will there be some sessions where they incorporate talking about the neural filters or AI, working with AI and Photoshop? Um, I mean, to a degree, probably not a whole lot at this point because it's still kind of an emerging area. Certainly the neural filters have been around for a while, so I know Corey and at least one other person I can, I think, 
sort of touches on that as part of a process, but it's not like we're going to do a whole class just on the AI part, but that's such a big part of Photoshop, like almost every class that involves selecting and masking probably is using things like select subject or the object selection tool, which is another form of that AI Adobe Sensei, uh, you know, machine learning kind of thing. So it's, it's definitely going to be covered throughout uh, for sure. Um, and then maybe by the time the next Photoshop summit comes in, in the late fall, by then we may have some more things to talk about in that area for sure. Great. Excellent. So for those watching, let us know if you have any questions about the Photoshop Creativity Virtual Summit. So while we're waiting for questions, I do want to say, because we have a, so there's a free pass that gets, gives you access to all the classes for 48 hours. So even if you're on the fence, because I had a few photographers contact me and say, well, I'm a photographer. I'm not sure if the content, how much it applies to me. And my response is, well, A, I feel like you're going once you watch it, you're going to find a whole lot of it does. But B, if you're not sure, then sign up for a free pass and check out some of the classes. And with that in mind, if nothing else, watch the class on day one by John Paul Capenegro, because first of all, his voice is just, if you've never heard <laughs> him talk before, you just need to, he could read the phone book and you'd be like, oh, yeah. Wow. <laughs> but his so <laughs> talking about inspiration, it's just it's amazing. Yeah. It really is is that alone is is worth checking out the classes on day one to say nothing of having people like Brooke Shaden and Bert Monroy and others talking about their thought process and how they get inspired and how they prepare. I mean, I think altogether it just it's a it's gonna be a wonderful collection of things to get your mind going and then the photoshop side and now that i've got that what can i do from a output standpoint you know sharing making portfolios getting galleries doing prints getting books published you know <clears throat> excuse me all that kind of stuff is just i think it's a, a really wonderful um, package uh, and just as an example we even have a class richard sturdivant uh, i saw him at uh, the imaging usa earlier this year and I saw him standing at the Canon booth and he had a print that he had made and he was painting like with physical paints and colored pencils and actually adding to make a completely unique original. And I thought, what a fascinating concept because in the digital world, you know, we make something in Photoshop and we could print 15 copies if we want. So none of them are really an original or we just duplicate the file, but he, is making original unique art because each print that he works on ends up being something of its own that's unique because he's physically painting right on top so i right away said i would love for you to show that in a class in the photoshop creativity virtual summit and he said sure thing and i just was watching part of it earlier and it's it makes me want to do it and i have never touched a paintbrush in my life but it just looks like such a an interesting concept to take a print that you've worked on, print it out, and then add to it, embellish it with some traditional media. I just think that's a just another example of the interesting ideas that you're going to get from this event. Yeah. Uh, someone was asking any walkthrough of the Photoshop beta on the cards. I don't think so. It's more like uh, the regular, most recent updated Photoshop, correct? Yeah, because well, yeah, you, I mean, the fact, the, that, uh, <laughs> the fact that Adobe has brought out a public beta is always makes things a little challenging because by nature, beta means it could change. So even though they've released it out in the public, the a beta part of that, the whole point behind it is for people to test it. And there's been more than once in the past where a tool that showed up in a beta went away for a while because it wasn't quite ready. So my personal philosophy is it's fine to kind of, there's lots of videos out there right now showing things that are in the public beta that are look pretty cool, but until it becomes an official part, I'm reluctant to include that in an event like this, just because I'd hate to have people get all excited about something and find when it finally comes out, it doesn't look or work quite the way that it, it did before. So, um, you know, they might get a mention or two here and there, but it's, 
we like to focus on the things you can do today and uh, take full advantage of it. Right. It'd be funny if you were to talk about a feature in the beta and then they don't even release it. So Well, that's what I'm saying, because you just, oh, yeah. you just never know. <laughs> yeah. There's been historically more than one time where uh, I'm on the, like many people on the beta testing, where it's the private non-disclosure beta testing and it's they are very clear about not talking about it for exactly that reason because they wouldn't want someone to say hey wait till you see the new configurator tool tool and then it never actually comes out and you've been telling people how wonderful it is and then it doesn't even exist anymore and that was just a made-up name by the way there's no such thing yeah it was a good name though dave it was i want to yeah. use that for some future tool yeah. i don't know what to do <laughs> So, so Dave, uh, someone asks, which and I'll kind of lead into a bigger question, but someone asks, uh, will it be recorded so I can watch it later in the evenings? So can you describe this day-to-day uh, -day structure? Sure. So each day, uh, each hour on the hour in the, based on the Eastern Daylight time zone, a new class is released and then it's a, available to watch for the next 48 hours. <clears throat> Excuse me. Sure. So yes, if you can't be there during the day you can watch it that evening or the next morning and that kind of repeats so monday's classes will go up to be available till wednesday tuesdays until thursday and so on um, so part of our goal was to make the classes free so that as many people as possible could watch them but of course our hope is that they'll people will look at the content and say gosh this is just so valuable watching it once is not enough. I need to be able to watch this over and over again. And that's why we have something we call the VIP pass, which gives you lifetime access to a, a VIP member area where you get uh, lifetime access to watch all the class recordings, as well as additional things that the free pass doesn't give you, such as class notes and bonus videos. There's a couple of full uh, additional classes. Uh, one from Aaron Blaze and one from Renee Robin, who that that are exclusive to VIP members, and just recently this was just added, and this is kind of amazing. Actually, um, Sebastian Michaels and Brooke Shaden had previously worked on a course. It's fourteen hours on planning and planning photo shoots and doing photo shoots, and you know, from a creative standpoint, it's like fourteen hours of training that they normally sell for. $197 and they very generously said, you know, we could just make that available to VIP members. Oh. And I was like, wow. okay, <laughs> sure. So that's, uh, that's quite a bonus on top of the 37, 39, whatever it ends up being classes for the summit itself. Then you would also have access to this uh, amazing course that Brooke and, and Sebastian did. So, um, Yes, to answer the back to the question, though, that that each day these classes, uh, they're all recorded. So the recording is released uh, each hour on the hour and you have all that free time to watch it. But of course, once you get into Tuesday, then new classes are coming out. So at a certain point, uh, it can become a challenge to watch everything. Needless to say, you can check out the schedule and kind of mark off. These are the classes that I I'm, I'm most interested in. Um, but I will also add that I've all, every time we do one of these summits, I get emails from people saying, you know, I almost wasn't going to watch such and such class because when I read the description, I was like, nah, I'm not sure if that's really for me, but then I end up watching it. And boy, am I sure glad I did because I learned so much and it really inspired me. And so even the classes that people think aren't really that much of interest or maybe appropriate for them, chances are there's something in there. And that's the other reason why many people opt for the VIP passes for exactly that reason. So you can maybe <clears throat> watch things later that at the time you're thinking, I don't know if I'm ready for this yet, but six months from now I might be. And once the yeah. summit, once Saturday rolls around, that's it for the free classes. It's all gone. There's no more chance to watch the, the free airing of the classes. That's when you need the VIP pass. And I was going to say uh, another reason why I appreciate the VIP passes. Many times I put it in my calendar. I'm all tuned in. I got my water and then the phone rings and the client says, I need you to come in for a couple of days. And then boom, the yep. schedule is completely different. So VIP pass, I can watch it on my own time, my own pace. Mm -hmm. so. 
And we get a lot of comments. I, I asked some of our VIP members to send in um, like testimonials or uh, video recordings of themselves talking about their experience with the VIP pass. And I can't remember how many. I want to say there's about 20-ish, maybe more. Um, and the recurring theme is I need to learn at my own pace. And so it's great that it's free, but I want to be able to go back to that video and watch it once. And then a couple of days later, watch it again and take some more notes or maybe hit pause and try something myself in Photoshop. So the ability to have control over when I watch them and as often as I want, you know, some people say it, I'm not ashamed to admit that it takes me four times watching a class to really feel like it, it makes sense to me because that's just the way I learn. So if that's you, then that's the other reason is the VIP pass makes, it takes all the pressure off. You can watch it at any time as much as you, as often as you want for as long as you want. Well, and it's, it's a, uh, it's a no brainer in the sense that it's try before you buy, like it's no risk. You get to watch the classes. And if you think this is for me, then you can buy the VIP pass. So it's, it's fantastic. Yeah. And the thing that I like is, you know, when you buy like a VIP pass, I can watch it once and then I'll watch it again and then I'll take notes. So I'll mm -hmm. type up notes and kind of, and then maybe the third time I'll watch it and pause and then work on a project that has those elements in it. So, yeah, exactly. And plus there's, you know, the added benefits. A lot of people like to have um, some kind of notes and every, all the instructors provide some form of class notes. Some people have, you know, a page or two of, of bullet points. And then there's piece of people like Lisa who, who create a small <laughs> encyclopedia, <laughs> which is an awesome uh, bonus for the, for the people who buy the VIP pass because it goes into a huge amount of detail. And, and that's, that's nice as well as there's lots of other little bonuses. Like some instructors have provided brushes or uh, textures you can download or, um, you know, other add-ons or, cheat sheets or additional bonus videos so there's there's a lot more to it obviously the the ability to go back and watch the classes over and over again is number one reason but there's a lot of extras in there as well that even touch on other areas and uh, it could be anything from an instructor who recorded their 45 minute class and then thought oh i, I could have also talked about this so they'll do an extra 10 or 15 minutes to talk about one other thing that they thought of, or maybe some keyboard shortcuts or whatever it might be. Excellent. Yeah, I provided for my compositing class, I provided a PDF, oh, PDF, sorry, PSD file of that composite. It's a, it's a little old, like, like a resized image, but still students will be able to click on all the layers and see the structure and, you know, right. breaking down all the way to like the original image and see like, maybe repeat all the steps that I did during the tutorial. Nice. Cool. So yeah, so uh, I guess the last thing to say, Dave, is uh, the details. It starts Monday, correct? Monday at what that, time? That is correct. So it starts, well, technically the first class is uh, at 8 a.m. Eastern Daylight Time, but there's a even before that, there's a little bit of an extra special treat. Uh, Kenna Klosterman, who many people know from the world of Creative Live, is doing. She's heavily into uh, meditation and mindfulness. And so I asked her to do a little kind of a kick things off with a little session on mindfulness for creativity. And it's a wonderful way to start. Um, so basically, if people sign up for the free pass, they'll get an email the morning of each day with a link to that day's classes. And then everything is on that page. You just keep refreshing that page each hour and you'll see the next class. And like I said, in there, there's also a button, of course, if you want to check out the VIP pass as well. And uh, there's a question. If you get the VIP pass, do you still have to sign in for the free virtual summit? No. The, no. The, as a VIP member, one of the benefits is you get a login to a member area. So in there when you'll see there's menus for each day and you can jump to whatever class you want. Once they've been shown, they still get released each hour, but uh, there's you just can access there. There's no reason to go to the free page because you have the same content plus all the extras like the uh, 
class notes, et cetera. Great. Excellent. Well, thank you so much, Dave, Lisa, Anya. Looking forward to uh, jumping in on Monday. It's going to yeah. be very exciting. So, and, uh, you know, creativity has always been my bigger love of Photoshop. So it'll be really nice yeah. to kind of see all these different artists doing their thing. Yeah. Um, and I, and, it's kind of like a, out. like the French have salons and you get, you, we work in a vacuum a lot. And it's so nice to have this com like this companion thing with other creatives and see what they do. And I know I talk, Anya's talking about her stuff. I talk about my process. I know other instructors are. So you don't have to feel so alone out there in your process. Exactly. And yeah, and I was going to say another good aspect about it is the fact that for years, a lot of people have been attending, you know, conferences and webinars and Adobe Live, Behance Live. And they kind of you go over the same thing. So this, by opening it up to being a creativity focused one, yeah. is going more into like the way that people's workflows are, where they get their ideas from, different, uh, you know, inspiration. So I think that's a really nice uh, deviation from something that we've seen so many times it's gonna be refreshing so. yeah i think the good thing about the great thing about this summit is that it's one thing to know all the tools and techniques and how to use them and how to use photoshop but that's another thing of knowing and uh how to apply them how to create work and be inspired to create work not just yeah. technical aspects of photoshop and photography yeah, this is really missing out in the ether of Photoshop training. No one's doing this. This is, yeah, Dave, right. you did a good thing setting this up. You're really good. <laughs> Thank you. And I think it's and a great mo motivation booster, at least for me. Like when I mm -hmm. watch all these amazing uh, speakers and photographers, it's like giving me this kick kickstarts the creative juices flow and mm -hmm. make me start thinking about all these new ideas. <laughs> And I think it's worth watching just for that. Exactly. Yeah. Great. So yeah, starting Monday, don't miss it. Sign up yeah. for the Photoshop Creativity Virtual Summit. Thanks so much, Dave, Lisa, Anya. Thank and you. Thank you. For those who are Thanks, watching guys. on, say, Facebook, yes, I will post the recording of this at the top. And uh, you know, make sure you can also go to YouTube and watch it on my Digital Art Drew channel. So check it out and uh, have fun this week at the Photoshop Creativity Virtual Summit. Excellent. Thanks, everybody. Bye.